Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I will share with you how you can create a diamond gradient. If you're coming from Photoshop, you can create a diamond gradient, which will look like what you see right now. Sadly, Affinity suite of applications do not have this out of the box. If we need a diamond gradient, we will need to recreate it. So let's get to it. If you look closely, the diamond gradient is actually made out of four squares with a diagonal gradient. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I will add a square and put a 45 angle linear gradient to it. Okay, let me correct the starting and the ending colors. In this case, I will be using one color, which is black, and have the gradient go from 0% opacity to 100% opacity. We're slowly getting there. As you might have noticed, our gradient is too linear compared to the Photoshop gradient. So let me try to adjust it. In the Photoshop gradient, the black is more concentrated towards the center. So I will add an extra point close to the center and give this around 80% opacity. Next step is to make sure the transition is more to the center by moving the handle of the transition in the last section. That actually looks pretty good. Now it's time to make a diamond. As I probably will be adjusting the gradient, I want to make sure all the copies will get the same gradient. So what you want is to use the duplicate linked function in Affinity Photo. This will ensure that all the copies will stay the same. Let me position the copy and then duplicate both of them as linked again. There seem to be some alignment issues. Let me quickly fix them by using the alignment tools. Perfect. Well, almost. The gradient in the center area of our copy is not yet perfect. So let me fine tune that in trying to get an exact match as possible. Now you see the beauty of the linked layers. I only need to adjust one layer and the other three layers are automatically updated. Without linked layers, this could have been a hell of a job. I will share this document in the description so you can view the exact settings I have used. You can also use them in your own work without worrying about how to recreate the diamond gradient. Perfect. Let's group them and test it with a red background. Looks good to me. So, why would you in the first place want a diamond gradient? Well, let me show you with an example image I also used in my previous videos. The diamond gradient works very well with landscape photos, especially with the sun. Because it has some kind of sharp edges, it creates a very nice effect. Let me position the gradient on top of the sun and I want to use it to give more light to that area. Usually we use the screen blend mode for this, but black has no effect with the screen blend mode, so we need to change the color. Let's apply a recolor adjustment to the gradient group. Interesting, nothing happens. Any ideas why the recolor doesn't work? Well, it's because the recolor cannot color pure black or pure white. So we need to do some adjustments on it. Let me set back the blend mode back to normal of our gradient group and add a curves layer to make the black 50% gray by making the curves line flat in the middle. The moment I did that, you notice the color was coming through. Let me recolor it to a nice warm color that will fit with the sun. If I put the blend mode back to screen or soft light, you get this nice softened sharp glow. 
I can adjust the blend range to control how I want this to blend with the image. Pretty awesome. Another way of using the diamond gradient is to make it a canvas filling gradient, meaning it will cover the whole canvas. Let me demonstrate that by first duplicating the current gradient. I will hide the original gradient and put the blend mode of the duplicate to normal to see what we're doing. Next, I will add a fill layer to the new group and select a nice warm blue purplish color. Now let me move the fill layer to the bottom of the group. Okay, this will be our base color. What I will do right now is to change the gradient colors and set their opacity to 100%. Just make sure that the ending color is exactly the same as the fill color we used. This looks good. And now back to soft light mode. Pretty cool. I can now move the gradient anywhere I like and it will always blend perfectly as the whole image is also colored with the fill color. As a bonus tip, before I wrap up, you can add an HSL adjustment layer to adjust the colors of the gradient to get interesting effects. That's it. I hope you liked this video and thanks for watching.